that was my first person ever to say ready afterwards. That worked out well. Usually they're just like mid drink or just yelling or finish saying the N word. So thank you. We go, <laughs> do we go all three names? Are we Ashley Marie Thornton? Is that our, is that our full name? I go by Ashley Marie Thornton. You can call me Ashley. I will call you whatever but, you want to be called. This is not a government where I have to give you the government name if you want to be that or Toby or whatever. Whatever you want to be called. But if you're going to be getting into the world of entertainment, three names is a good thing, right? Yeah, so Ashley Mar Marie Thornton. There's too many Ashleys out there, so that's why I put but in my middle Not the way you spell it. I think the way you spell it is less porny. Uh, I think it, the other way with the EY is the porn way. So you're, you're, you moved away from the porn. Porn people don't use three names. So you're away from there. Regular actor, I think, would go Ashley, but then go with a Y and the E-I-G-H. I think they'd go all of them, I think just to be so different. I've also seen with the E-E. -E. I've never seen I the E-E. I think the L-E-E -E is the more porny way. Yeah, well, that one's not Ashley. That's Ashley. And it, so that's like a way to – that's like two names. And I think they're just trying to say ass at that point. They're like, assly. They don't want to go flat out and be ass. So, but now you're going to be start, first of all, because you're the second person I've had on the last couple of weeks to be able to talk about having a broken foot with me that has a broken foot. So how did you break your foot? I tripped. <laughs> That's it? You just fell? Yeah, I was just walking. You tripped and broke your foot. My kitchen and I tripped over my dining room chair. But then broke your foot. Yeah. What kind of, and it, what, one of those things were like, I knew right away too. Well, of course you knew right away. You, you broke your foot. That, 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 that hurts. But like, how were you running from someone? Like to trip, I've tripped, I've stubbed my toe, which by the way is a thing you always do as a kid, but as an adult, you get made fun of. But as a kid, it's devastating. I did it on a vacuum once and I was like, I had to go to the hospital. Like I was crying so much. I stubbed my toe. It was bleeding a little, but to, to break your foot, on a chair first of all what's the chair made of like you know kryptonite like why how'd you break your foot on it i just tripped no that's not just like, tripped. Not this is a call for help something happened and you're not sharing and now we know that you were running from bad people you're in you're in the west coast so maybe scientologists were chasing you and you didn't want to give them your money see they, they broke your foot they're the new wet they're the mobsters of the west coast scientologists i know you can't say anything because you'll lose your job they'll, they'll get you I actually, okay, so I was home alone. I wasn't running from anything, but I do have a creepy Scientology story, for real. Please. Okay, so this is, it was my first year living in LA, and I was with my gay best friend, and we were- You could have uh, just said best friend, but you're showing off. That's a, that's a West Coast thing. In New York, we just go, that ah, is homo, but like, you did gay best friend. That's fine. Um, we were- at um, one of my favorite coffee houses, which is just so happened across the street from their, the Scientology Celebrity Center, which I love how they have a celebrity center. You, you need it. They got it. They're already self-centered. They need a celebrity self-centered. That's what they should call it, the celebrity self-centered. It'd be a better name for it. <laughs> and um, we were walking back to wherever we parked the car, and my gay best friend, he was like, oh my God, that guy over there is so hot. And he's going on about this hot guy. So he approaches him and this hot guy apparently works for the celebrity center. Yeah. And he says, why don't you do the free tour? And so- Well, you know, he's a trap, right? He's out there to get the gay. The gays love yes. it. Yes. Yes, he's, he's there. He's luring whatever he can, women and gays to come on in. So yeah. Then what, so what, then what does your gay best friend say next? <laughs> So I don't remember what he said next, but so then we do this stupid tour and it was the creepiest thing I've ever done in my life. The whole time we're just looking at each other and we're talking like, how do we get out of this now? And the creepiest part is, so we go by the basement and they have the cleansing rooms and we hear people screaming. Nice. That's hot. Now, first of all, you know how to get out of it, right? You just, when you walk in, you go, oh, this is great, man. I'm so broke. They'll go, okay, oh, no. see you later. It was free, but of course they're trying to oh, get you to I meant to up. get you. They don't, they don't want you to, be, to join them if you're broke. It's free to do the tour. But if they find out you've got no money, they don't need you because they want you have to pay money to be in there. So how we eventually got out of it was my gay best friend said he was late for work. And we just ran out of there. I like that you keep saying gay best friend. Do you also have a straight best friend? I, 
I guess I don't call them that. <laughs> yeah, well, see, I guess you didn't realize that you're not as open-minded. You, you label them. It's like you have a regular best, do you say regular best friend? I have a regular best friend and then an improper, evil, can't-go-to-heaven best friend. That would be the name for the gay best friend in some circles. Now, wait, the Scientology, are they fine with, they're fine with gay people, I would assume. They're, I don't know. I mean, a lot of actors like Tom Cruise. I mean, I know he hasn't told people, but he's gay. Um, <laughs> most actors are. So I would think they're fine with it in Hollywood. So I don't, I, uh, that, yeah, I guess that's not only like the Catholic church is weird. So, but I guess you, as long as you give them money, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's, see, that's why I don't understand why the Catholic church cares because like, that one of the big reasons they make money in big ways is through weddings and things of that nature. So why, if gay people want to get married, the fact that they were like saying no for so long, it's like, dude, no one's going to your church and sign up anyway. Open it up. The more weddings, the better. You, you made this thing a business as it was. Let them get married in your thing. It's so another go, well, we don't think it's a proper. I'm like, what the fuck is proper about pretend, not knowing if there really is a superpower and then making us give money to go see him and then yelling at your kids that he's watching you when you jerk off. That's not a good time. He's like Santa, but like meaner. God. So, but if you and just like it, imagine how fabulous those weddings would be. I'm sure that, well, we regular weddings are also gay. I mean, that's who's, that's who's putting them together. The person that's decorating the room and coordinating the wedding. The person you sit down with usually isn't straight. A straight guy is not going to help you put a wedding together. It's not going to be good. It would just look like a, a man cave. It wouldn't be a good time. You definitely need gay in there. The colors, the flowing, the cake. The, the gayest thing in the world is a wedding cake. There's nothing gayer than a wedding cake. It doesn't need to be big and giant and fabulous. It's just a fucking cake that no one's really going to eat anyway. But it's, yeah, weddings are gay. They're made for gay people. But they just can't have them. But now they can. Because I don't think anyone cares now with COVID. Come on, you can't care if someone's gay anymore. We're all going to die of, uh, of bat disease. So we're all dying. 99.8 of us won't. But that point two dead what's it like in the west coast are people super scared wearing masks are they like all freaking out is it like some people are some people aren't what are you experiencing um yeah it's we're so i'm in los angeles i think you know that but just yes. if anyone sitting that doesn't know that i, I mean they got that from the scientology yeah. part they're not <laughs> they're not in san diego <laughs> um yeah everything is still locked down like no restaurants are bars but you know of course you could still go to like walmart or target and um, can, you eat, can you eat outside they do like outdoor patio eating and stuff like that that's what they're doing on the east coast they're making you eat on the sidewalk of a place where you're like why the fuck do i want i can do that anywhere like i, I don't want to have the homeless experience where i sit on the sidewalk i haven't seen that yet i've just seen like the drive throughs and but yeah what was really fucked up was um i uh, I don't know how many weeks ago it was, but I guess they had, the governor had given the okay for restaurants to reopen, just, you know, like seat every other table, whatever. And then four days later, he changed his mind, I guess. So then all of these restaurants, you know, they order all of that food and, um, you know, so that all that's gone to waste. And yeah. I mean, these, yeah. these businesses are, are dying because they're waiting on the decisions from people that don't know what the fuck they're doing and then making decisions and then backpedaling when they feel like it's going to make them look bad. And it's like, you got to stick to one or the other because people are not depending on what you're saying. People would job for schools or anywhere for restaurants, all that stuff. They don't know if they're going to work or not because people won't make up their goddamn minds because they're afraid of the backlash. Just make one decision. And if it does, listen, neither decision is going to kill anyone. You know what I mean? If you close restaurants and say, no, you can't eat at restaurants, no one's going to die from that. Yeah, people will lose a lot of jobs. They're going to have to find other jobs that will suck. But, like, make one decision and fucking stick to it. Well, I can, in the East Coast, we're eating outside, and it's dumb. I, I run – I live in a town that's not nice. It's, it's kind of shitty. And downtown's shitty, too. And I'm running on a sidewalk, and now I'm running through your restaurant. They don't close it off. So you're sitting there with your mom trying to have brunch at some place that shouldn't be outside seating because it's a shitty road. My downtown looks like Back to the Future from, like, when they, in the 60s when they, had to, when they went back in time. And it's a weird place to be. And now these white people are trying to eat weird eggs and I'm running shirtless by them through their restaurant. It's like, it's a dumb experience. Just go home. But it's just, uh, are you, are you afraid? Are you one of those men? I'll wear a mask when I have to go somewhere. But are you like afraid or do you just do it when you have to do it? I just do it when I have to do it. And because I love the movie industry, of course, my face mask is the alien face hugger. 
<laughs> of, of course. They, the alien, see, certain movies were ready for this kind of thing. Like we, you know, I, I like the people that capitalize off panic. Those are my favorite people. The people that were like, let's make masks with silly face. Or the people that you could buy your own face and have it made on the mask so it looks like your face. I know people that have gotten those. There's nothing better than someone that fucking profits off people's fear. It's my favorite. I know Tom Savini was doing like the Jason mask and the letter face mask and he was signing them for people. Yeah, I wonder how much you have to pay for a thing that we're going to look back at and go, what the fuck? Why do I have this mask? Like our history is going to be so weird from this now. There was a time where we were, this is like a sci-fi movie. When you'd watch it and you go, or like, even like, you know, any of those weird movies in the future where they're like, you know, the government rules over and makes announcements. Like, I'm at a retail store. They're making a, make sure you're wearing your mask. Like, holy shit. That's like sci-fi movies, but that's real. It, it, it's real that we're, we're, we're telling people, make sure you're doing this or you're improper and not right. And you're going to hurt, you're going to kill your grandma. It's like, it's, it's just a weird time. Just like one year ago, we could give a fuck. And no one, we've made fun of Chinese people wearing masks, and now we are the Chinese. So we are, we've become Chinese. So I can tell you're uh, uh, in the Hollywood area because every time I bring up race or gays, you get quiet. That's good. That's fine. I will do that. I will take the brunt. You just smile and nod, and we'll just we'll just dub in the part where you said the N word. It's fine. Um, we'll take care of it that way. You're getting. I know you're going to start working with Warner Brothers and doing something like that. Have you worked in entertainment before? You've been there. You've been living there for 10 years. Were you working in entertainment or just living out there wanting to? Um, just in terms of working, just, you know, like independent stuff. Um, so, you know, just, you know, doing what I can, but nothing with really any prominence. Um, no, you know, like no one's going to skip your like film. Yeah, but you're still learning the ground and doing. Listen, I've been doing comedy for 13 years, and it's not like everyone's seen my stuff for a long time. I'm not, I'm not traveling the country or doing anything like that. But you're still working at something that you love and pushing towards it and going after that. Have you? Are you? What do you do? You do more writing? Do you do more directing? Do you do more just standing there and eating the craft services? What do you do? I so ideally in a perfect world, I'd love to have my only source of income be from screenwriting. Uh, no desire to direct. I don't know what any lenses are. That stuff confuses me as soon as people start talking about it. So I know I'm a writer, not a director. Um, yeah. But are you bossy? Because that's all you really need to be. You could be a writer and then also realize that you don't like other people's opinion. Then you become a director. That's all that really is. You're, you're start off, they all start off writing and then they're like, oh, wait, I hate other people's thoughts. Now I direct. That's all it is. Are you bossy? Would people say you're a bossy person? I don't think anyone said that about me ever. <laughs> well, then you're bossy because they're not saying it to They're saying it about you afterward. That's what it is. Uh, people call me, but I, I'm a, I, I control everything. People make jokes about it, but like literally if I show up at a comedy show and I'm not even the one that ran it, I'm the first one to make sure like looking around and trying to tell people how to run right. I'm, I'm one of those stupid control freaks in that way. I know that. If I wrote something, I'd also have to direct it. I'd have to have all control of it or I wouldn't be able to handle it. And that's not a good thing. And I know that, but. I don't play well with other people. So what kind of stuff would you write? Have you written stuff? Sorry, what was that? Have you written things? Like, what have you, what have you written? Oh. Screenplays and things. Like, what, what, what do you write about? Oh, oh yeah. Um, so many different irons in the fire, obviously. Um, I do know about Stephen King's Dollar Baby program. No. I know about uh, – Stephen, does Stephen King have a fucked up daughter? I don't know. Is that his daughter? Someone, the one that, that's like in porn? Is that his daughter? One of those guys. George Lucas. Never mind. That's a different guy. Oh. Yeah, they have that weird daughter. So Stephen King's George Lucas um, has a weird daughter. Stephen King has a dollar baby. There you go. Um, so uh, since the late 70s, he will sell the rights to certain short stories for a dollar. And um, you can you know, make, sh uh, there, there's other rules in the contract, but wait, just, he, so he writes a short story and then sells it to you for a dollar. There's, there's stories he's already written. Right. And then and, he just makes you give him a dollar. Yeah. For the rights to do, to adapt. I know it. it sounds good, but he's also, he should give you the dollar back. Cause he's fucking Stephen King. He's Stephen <laughs> yeah, King. He doesn't need your dollar. It's almost weird when they take a dollar. It doesn't take anything. <laughs> like if I did a comedy show and someone's like, Hey, um, can you do 15 minutes? I'm like, sure. And if it didn't pay, I'm like, all right, I'll work on my terrible. They're like, we'll pay you a dollar. I'm like, I'd rather do it for free than say I got a dollar. 
Stephen King's like selling his worth. I know he's saying it's nice, but he obviously if it was good shit, you would he would have used it because he's Stephen King. So he's giving you his terrible stuff. His Stephen Prince, if you will. Not even Stephen King. It's not the it's not the royalty of it. I hope he writes just awful things on purpose and sees who buys it. Like this is a story about a retarded slave. It's like, oh my God, no one's gonna buy that. And someone's like, it's a dollar. It's like, all right, I'll try it. I'll try it. Don't buy that one. That won't be a good one. I mean, I would write it. I'm, I might write it now, and then I might sell it. So I'll call it Stephen King Jr.'s 50 Cent Baby. That's what I'm going to do. Stephen King's 50 Cent Baby. So did you buy a good one? I think I did. And um, then I guess every that's the only thing I've adapted, and everything else has all been original. Yeah, I think I'd rather do original. So when you're da- adapting it, you're buying the idea, and then you're, like, fan fictioning it? Or you're, like... Are you just writing what, like, rewriting what he wrote? Like, I don't, like, it's his idea, right? You're just taking the idea and you're kind of adding your own little twist to it or what? Um, I, I feel like I'm pretty faithful to the story. Um, the only thing I did different was his story takes place in the Florida Keys and I transposed mine to Catalina Island out here. So... But Did it's you make sure much- that's diverse? You know, there, is it diversity? Is everyone a different color? And then white people are the evil devil? That's Hollywood. Uh, I have not yet begun casting. See? You got to do that. You got to make sure. The hero has to be a non-binary, androgynous goat named Wilbur. That's what it has to be. A goat that does not care who his lover is. He only is standing up for rights. That's what it is. I'd, be, I'd watch that. A go- Find a goat to play it so you don't think about you don't when you write something you don't think about what they look like i do when i write things i think about what they look like maybe that's wrong but i always when i create anything the first thing i think in my head is what does this person look like what do they do how do they act what's their whole upbringing i i think of that so i kind of have to go that way and i write a lot when i do write things it's about white people because i've only been a white people i don't I think it'd be weirder for me to write a role for like an african-american woman with six kids like i haven't been that yet maybe i'll come back someday as a fat black mom, that'd be kind of cool. But like, you don't write from your, even though it's not about you, you don't write from like your perspective when you write things. Oh, I've written stuff that's semi-autobiographical. Um, but I, you know, sometimes I'll have like an idea in mind, but um, but not really, not usually. No. Oh. No. Yeah. Just write, you're just writing. Yeah. What do you what 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 inspires you? Like if you had to forget Stephen King's, you know, his baby he gave away, which I like calling it that better. His abandoned baby, not dollar baby. He's he is, he's abandoning he's selling his babies like in a black market for a dollar. These are his babies and he sold them. I wonder how many Epstein bought. Hey yo. Um so if you're writing something on your own, uh, what in what what's your thing to go to? Like do you like is it horror? Is it uh suspense is it crime is it just a love story is there some one thing or you just like whatever idea hits you i'm yeah i'm kind of a little all over the place um in terms of genre are you familiar with the save the cat trilogy no i'm not familiar with anything you've said so far (laughs) except for scientology i I do know what gay best friends are i don't know about dollar babies and i don't know about saving cats i've had babies i've never i don't have cats so i don't know about them what's the save the cat trilogy and why do i why couldn't they save the cat in the first one why did it take three <laughs> i'm so it's a- they should be able to save a cat what it should if you have to watch three movies on saving a cat that cat died at one point and i'm guessing like nemo they had to find you know find it and another cat came and took its place <laughs> it's um uh- it was written by Blake Snyder, and um, it's oh, that's, uh, that's a white guy name, Blake Snyder. What's he, I don't know. I know other Snyders. Is, does he does he have a lot of work, or is he another guy? You say he's in the industry, but he really just is a waiter right now. But he wrote this thing about cats. Uh, yeah, very accomplished screenwriter. Um, he so Named this uh, trilogy is like a screenwriting how to. Um, but he conceptualizes genres differently. So, um, like, let's just take horror, for example. 
Um, I know his is called Monster in a House, and so that's uh, just where something Whoa, takes whoa, whoa, like Monster in a House? There's already Monster House. He just put <laughs> in a in the middle of – there's already Monster House. He can't just put in a and then make it his. I'd be like, <laughs> my movie's called Casa in a Blanca. That's mine, <laughs> Casa in a Blanca. I created it. That's mine now. <laughs> Jerry in a Maguire. That's my movie. That's what I call it. Cat out monster in a house. He's a monster. He can get out of any house he wants. He's a monster. <laughs> yeah, I'd, be, just, I'd be great in a writing room. They would never get anything you, done. They're like, they yell out one idea and I do that. They're like, can you leave the room for a while so we can get something done? I'm like, all right. <laughs> Fine. All right. So he's got a thing. The, the brilliant, talented Blake Snyder that no one's heard of wrote this thing <laughs> called Cat House. Or cat in a house with a oh, monster in a house with cats. What is it? It's a cat, monster in a house, cat trilogy. <laughs> um, but just like for that one in particular, that's just anything that takes place in one location. So for example, Alien takes place in the spaceship. Yes. And actually speaking of Alien, that's where the save the cat comes from because at the very beginning she saves the cat. So the principle from that is like, you want the hero to do something good like that. So you instantly like them. And um, <laughs> you're shaking your head. You I don't think you instantly like them. <laughs> you might be like questioning it. Like, oh, okay. So, you know what I mean? Like maybe, you know what movie should be made? Here's the million dollar movie that no one's ever made. Now you're younger than me. So you may not know, remember this story in, a, in our times in history, pop culture. But there was a story of baby Jessica. Baby Jessica was stuck in a well. Do you know her story? What if she never got out of the well? What if they just they couldn't get her out for some reason and there was a fault in lines where they didn't even think it would destroy the earth? And, they, and then she just had to live in the goddamn well forever. She's down there. They're feeding her food. Her parents take care of her and die. People start losing interest in baby Jessica in the well because now she's not baby Jessica. She's toddler Jessica in the well. And that's annoying because people don't really like toddlers. And then that gets weird. And then like creeps start showing up. They're pedophiles, but they can't do anything because they're on top of the well. So they're weird to her, but she doesn't care. She doesn't know anything different. And she starts to get salty and mean because she lives in a well. Then she becomes angsty teen in a well. And people are following her. And then some guys or girls visit and they get creepy and she starts to fall in love, but she can't touch them because she's in the goddamn well. And her whole life goes that way. And then she starts to get older and then one day comes out of the well like 30 years later and now has to live life as this angry, salty, forgotten well woman. There's your fucking movie. Why aren't people making that one? Take that, Blake Schneider. I'm better than you. Look what I just fucking did. Well, baby. I'll sell it for 50 um, cents. Blake Schneider is deceased, by the way. <laughs> well, he probably is after that monster in a house thing didn't work out. <laughs> he had to die. He had to die. That's the best way if you're going to be a writer to make money is to be dead. That's what I see. If you're an artist or a writer, if you're dead, then people like your stuff. But you don't know. That's what stinks about it. You don't know. You die, and then you're like, hopefully. That's what's got to stink, too. If you're like this struggling artist, you're like, well, when I die, at least people appreciate me. And then they don't even then. But like, it's still just poop in a can, dude. You just made poop in a can. That, that really wasn't a good idea. But, yeah, I think my well baby movie could do well. That's got the, you care about the well baby, right? Right away. Interest. You want like the well a baby as well. Sort of. <laughs> coming of age well baby. Like, or maybe someone else gets stuck in a well. Somebody like one of those copycat people, and they make sure they, they throw their baby in a well because they want attention. And then that baby wants to be like baby Jessica when it grows up. And it hates it. And Jessica gets all the fame when it's adult. And the ba this other one got, was like the doppelganger ba well baby. And no one cared about it. And it becomes like single white female, but single white well dweller. I, I just wrote two movies. I just wrote two separate movies. Two this is easy. Very easy. Or if you need to make a franchise out of it. Yeah. That's the... And people... Or... People go well, to the well. Well, baby franchise. Baby Jessica's always in the well. And then people go there. Then, like, Fantasy Island, they go to the well, and they, they tell her, her their, their darkest secrets, and then they come true. And it's called Well Wisher. And they go there, and they, they make their wish in the well, and baby Jessica has this weird ground power because she's been stuck in the ground, and she knows the lizard people because they live down there. She has their powers, and now she can grant their wishes. See, Ooh. then that could be a trilogy or that could be a sci-fi show. It could be every week. Ah. You show up and you talk to baby Jessica in the well. 
I love it. I think Green more people need to talk about baby Jessica in the well. That should not be forgotten. If, if I'm almost dead years from now and more people know about Joe Exotic than they do baby Jessica in the well, I'll be upset. Baby Jessica earned that. She was in a goddamn well. And I don't care what you say. Her parents should not have had a well that wasn't guarded. That's abuse. Have you ever been in a well? I have not. Have you ever even been to a well? I've never uh, been next to a well. I don't know any well. I, I, I know what wells look like because I've seen it on TV in a movie, in an old movie, but I've never been to a well. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Who's using wells? I, um, my, well, she's dead now, but my grandmother. Yeah, she, she died like, from well use. I know, like, they had well water, which was gross. It sounds like it's, like, not real water. Like, is that water? Well, it's well water. It's like, it's like well, water. I guess it's fine. It's water. Yeah, it is gross. It, it is gross because it's regular water. We need to filter and clean it up a little bit. I mean, I drank water out of a tap growing up, and I'm fine, but that still was from a tap. It's not – I don't need to see – I'm not like someone – I don't drink anymore, but when I did, I didn't need to go to a brewery to see where it was made. I'm not one of those weirdos that needs to see the whole beginning. I don't need to see the water come out of the ground just – just give me water. If you have a well, you're trying too hard. You could not have a well. You could have a pipe. I can't build anything, but I could build a pipe. Couldn't you do that? Couldn't you just put a pipe somewhere? Yeah, I don't know how that works. Me either. But it can't be as hard as having a well. You got to walk out there. You got to have the buckets. You got to carry. You're doing the bucket arm thing. That, that's too much. And yeah. your baby's in. What if your baby's in there? And your baby. Now you got. Now you're. What if you like the taste of baby? What if you drank that water and didn't realize the baby was in it? And you're like, this is the best water ever. And you're like, we need more baby in the water. And then people start putting the. Maybe that's where the baby with the bath water came from. Even though that was way before that. Maybe. So it's not the same yeah. thing. So, but yeah. I don't know. I've never had baby water. I or have not either. Water, probably not. Never. You yeah. see, this is the movie that he made. We, now we have a documentary. Why wells? Why? Why did we ever have these things? I wouldn't even know where to dig for water. Yeah, no I wouldn't oil. either. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know much. We're bad when it comes. We wouldn't survive well. Are you a survivalist? Could you could you live outside if I just gave you a knife and a backpack and said you go? froze up? I froze up a lot. You also freeze up. We freeze. Oh, up. that's what oh. we do. I would die like instantly. Instantly, I watched that show alone on a Netflix. It was on Netflix, but like that show where they, they had to go out into like, like the uh, you know, Arctic and like live there. Yeah, I would have tapped out in thirty minutes. Yeah. I can't. I I can't kill stuff. Can you kill stuff? You can't kill stuff. You broke your foot walking. You can't kill stuff. Yeah, I would fail at all of that. Are you are you someone who kills things? Do you have a gun? Do you shoot things? Of course you don't. Um, You're in entertainment. I don't have a gun, but if things start getting worse, we should have one. What? But yeah, Do you know I, how to use I, one? I've never used one before, but I just know that if I were to get any sort of formal training, it would. Ju I would suck at a situation where I had to use one. I would just be one of the first ones dead. <laughs> Yeah, like you had formal training in how to walk and you still broke your foot on a chair. So, like, I don't know if formal training is going to work. So, you were taught how to walk way longer than you were taught how to use a gun. I know I couldn't kill anyone. I would be psyched if I had friends that had guns. So, if shit went down, they'd have my back. But I know I could not aim a gun at a person. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. If people want, can do that and they can defend themselves, that's great. I just don't have that in me. I could punch you a whole bunch. But I, don't, I couldn't shoot you. I don't want to kill things. Or food. I couldn't kill food. I, I, get, I mean, I step on a bug, but they don't count. Yeah. Do you care about yeah. bugs? No. If you live in – I think you're doing this all wrong. If you're going to live in fucking Hollywood, you're going to be out in Los Angeles. You've got to care about – you've got to have a weird right, a thing you believe in, like, you know, save the cockroach. You've got to have a weird fucking thing that you need to fucking have a stance for to stick out. What's your weird thing? What's the thing that you're like, we need more, like, we have to save, you know, babies with three feet. If, if a baby's born with three legs, then it has to be triumphed and heralded. 
Oh, I need a cause. Yeah, you need a cause. Um, What's your cause? What is my cause? I causes I don't to know. be your cause. Yeah. You believe in causes, and we need more causes. There aren't enough causes out there, and we need diverse young people to come up with causes. Yes. All or, of the causes. I love that. Or causes that cause trauma. Cause causers. Cause causers. <laughs> yeah, they cause causes. Some who are the people that have problems that make us go for a cause. Like that's your cause. That's or my people that stutter. <laughs> pause for a cause. What? People pause. that stutter. Pause for a cause. Oh. You can defend. Okay. You can, no one cares about stutterers anymore. Yeah. You don't hear about Lots them. You don't. If you were writing a movie and you wrote a stutterer in it, would you cast a stutterer to play it? Because you're supposed to do that now. Do you need a stutterer? Or would you ask an actor to pretend to stutter? Which is wrong, right? I, so yeah. You have to think, have to think I, about that stuff. writer, now. I don't think I'll be probably involved in casting decisions. Yeah, but you'd watch but... them cast and you'd be mad when they cast a weird thing. You'd be like, ah, that's not my vision. You'd still be upset about it. Like when you found out, you're like, I'm happy I sold it. I sold this thing that I stole from Stephen King for a dollar. But now that I sold it, they're going to cast this person. And like, you don't want just an actor, you know, who just because they can stutter got the role. You want the best person for the role. Right? Right. Right. Like, what if you wrote something that you, what if you did a lot of history and research and you wrote something from the time of slavery and you did a ton of research and you wrote it and yeah, you happen to be a white woman, but you wrote this thing and you have a good perspective and it's a great story. If I find out you wrote it, am I supposed to not want, that's what I don't like what's happening. That's why I think it's weird. I think it's great that you're going after your dream, but it's, this is the weirdest time to go into entertainment because you're going to have to worry about these things you never had to worry about before. Creative people can't be stopped by outside non-creative people putting all these parameters on them. We have to be allowed to create. If you want to write about black women in history and you did the research and you have a great idea, you should be able to do that and not be told you can't do it because you weren't born a certain way. Your mind is not a color. Your mind is who you are and what you come up with. So that's going to be a weird thing to battle with. And the other thing too is so if, if a person is not allowed to – write about another perspective or I don't know, whatever. So it's like, I can only write about my own experiences. Yeah. I can only do an autobiography. Yeah. Like, it's, it's very odd, like, but that's not what you are. You're not a writer of autobiography. You're, if you're a creative, you want to write things that aren't you. you I think I can write anything. But I, and you can, you can write anything and you don't even have to listen to these people because they're just loud on the internet and in real life, they're not going to stop you. But like, there are people with power that are just afraid of backlash and that's what sucks. It's the weenies yeah. up top that are afraid of the hear shit. They shouldn't matter. Like when voice actors started getting canceled, that's when I started getting upset because, okay, I get it in, in theory, what you're saying, but as someone who likes to create stuff, if I come up with an idea, Hank Azaria made characters that are iconic. He should be allowed to see them out to the end. They all should. Now, if you're writing something new and you want to say, well, from now on, if it's a black cartoon, then it should be a black voice. Well, it's a cartoon. Uh, you want to solve that? Draw them all green. The Simpsons are all yellow. People aren't yellow. Okay, I know some racists will say, well, no, Asians are yellow. They're not yellow. That's not, they're not yellow. We're not white. They're not yellow. We're peach, and they're a different peach. Like, but it's not that. So it's dumb that we're even thinking about that. And the fact that the people that are talking about that and pushing that think they're helping, but you're, all you're doing is making that tension worse. All you're doing is making us think about that instead of just enjoying things. No one watched The Simpsons and thought about who was voicing it. People would get surprised to this day and go, oh, wow, a woman does Bart's voice? They, no one knew them. We, now, now I was just going to say. Yeah, you're just calling them out for no reason. Mm -hmm. Or I have a dear friend. Um, I probably shouldn't say this, but she's done some work for Star Wars. And, but, you know, the, you know, the, the character's like an alien. That's all I'll say. Obviously, she, there's no... Or maybe there are aliens. I don't know. But, you know, it's this fictitious right. character. And but, they, but when they do the voices, there's just some of them that definitely sound Chinese. 
when you watch Star Wars. They're like, they're, well, they can't help it. We, we only can do so many. If we're going to make them talk like us in our language, they're yeah. going to have weird accents. And you only, there's only so many you can make up, but something's going to sound. But that's what I think it's dumb. Someone's like, well, that seems like an Asian character. It's like it's from a different planet. It has a fish head. It's not Asian. Well, the Asians eat fish. Like you're, that's the thing. The people that are pointing out the problems are more racist or stereotypical than the people that are actually just – that you think are that way like well you're thinking this and this I'm like, not i wasn't thinking that i mean now i am but you brought it up you're the person who's thinking it's because of this or that whatever i only did it because i don't know what voice to do for the fish man so i just tried that one and it stuck yeah so you're, you're making a movie about space we don't know anything about space they might have our accents but we don't know fake things I just want to say, I think that creativity is going to be taking a real beating after all this. And I think it's going to be harder to create. And those people that want to stand out and do that aren't going to see the fruits of their labor until long after they're gone. Because then people are going to start appreciating. I think people are going to dig back into it later and go, oh, there's this whole time period where very creative people are trying to come up with stuff. And they were squashed and, and suffocated by this group of people that want to stop us all from free thinking. We really are in that time right now. We're kind of like that and say whatever, but it's, it's real weird. Yeah. I, and you know, with films, there's development hell and just. What's development hell? Oh, just, oh, the usual, you know, just. Uh, That's not like the, if you're going through puberty for 12 years development hell uh just all of the um executives um uh having their comments oh yeah it's okay we can't do this yet you got to have this person in it or you got to have this person of color or you got to have this thing or we, we got to address this more or you can't do this story oh that guy yeah that's got to be the worst dealing with the people that are the money you have this great idea so I guess you're better off, like I was saying before, like, wouldn't you be mad about casting? Yeah, I guess you're better off just writing it and selling it and saying, ah, fuck with it. I'll take the money. But it's, you're still your baby, and you don't want to see it. Just, I, I've got a good one, a good story. And I feel like I could talk about this because my friends talked about it on his podcast. Um, long, long time ago, he did a draft of Aquaman, and the people, they said – they really like it, but can you um, do Aquaman, but without any of the water scenes? Ooh. What would that be? <laughs> fish, out of, fish out of water Aquaman? They wanted it all on land, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, but... like I, You know what? I kind of like it. But without water. I kind of like it. Aquaman, and he's got no powers because his whole power is talking to fish. <laughs> So is he just going to restaurants and talking to like lobsters and tanks? Like, what's he doing? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's when my uh, friends, um, you know, left the project. <laughs> oh, I should have tried it. I would have written the most ridiculous thing. Just, just the stupidest thing where he's just like hanging out in a puddle crying because he misses his water the whole time. Aquaman. It's Waterman. That's his name. He needs water. Can you I know. Wait? It's literally in the title. <laughs> And then I like how they're like, well, okay, you can have water, but can you make Aquaman super handsome? It's like, he was never super handsome. He looked like a, one of Hitler's friends. He was like, he was very Aryan nation-y in the cartoons. He had blonde hair and he was okay looking, but he wasn't Momoa. Momoa right. is too handsome to live in the water. I mean, he looks good wet, so that makes sense. But like, that's not a guy who lives in the water. There's no gym in the water. Where's Momoa working out in the water? I never saw Aquaman, by the way. I just know Momoa. I like, never have either. <laughs> I wouldn't have known if you made a movie about Aquaman not being in the water. I wouldn't have known. I might have watched it if you said, "You know this one? He doesn't go in the water like wait, at all. It's Aquaman. Yeah, he doesn't go in the water at all. It's crazy. <laughs> Superman doesn't use his power. It's Superman, but he's just Clark Kent the whole time. It's just the Clark Kent stuff. <laughs> it's just the guy being a reporter, kind of having a crush on a girl, but he's afraid to talk to her. I'm like, oh, it sounds like every other movie, but it's Superman. We call it Superman. But he doesn't fight anyone or do anything. And he doesn't even mention he's from somewhere else. He just has two nice parents, live on a farm. That's it. I'd, I'd watch that, too. I think I would watch that. I would watch it to see, like, just how badly it ends. All superhero movies, but they're, they're just their regular lives. Like, just, just the alter egos. I'd watch that. Tony Stark just being a dick at, at work. I'd watch that, too. These are, see, here you go. 
50 cents. I'm selling these babies. These are my crafted babies. 50 cent Pat Oates babies. That's what I'm bringing up. Oh, there you are. You were gone and you're back. My phone, just, I'm going to plug in my charger. Um, I hope I got the, okay, it's charging. I can, I can feel it. I can feel the surge coming through the phone. It's amazing. So you're going to start off going back to work soon. Do you think people are going to be, like, you're going to be around, are you going to be around actors? I'm really not sure what my job duties all entail yet. And because I don't think actors are going to care because they're just superficial fucks. I think I want to know the people that are trying to get into it, like you. This, like I said, it's a weird time. Are they going to be just afraid to have opinions? Because, like, think about it. If your stance on a mask is not the one that somebody who has a job that you could move up with. They might judge you on that instead of your talent, your body of work, what you can offer, all these things. And they might be like, well, you, you like masks and I don't, so sorry. Like, it's already an ass-kissing business. You're going to have to, like, do research to find out all these dumb things. Like, you know, how they feel on this, how they feel with, with the election coming. All these things are going to counter more than that if you're a good writer. Are you worried about that kind of shit? Are you worried? Like, you've been very smart. And every time I've said something awful, you just shook your head. And you have not said yes or no. It's a good move. I get that. And I, that's, I'm fine with that move. I'm fine with it. I know that you listen to terrible things. I know people you know. It's fine. I got the dirt. I'm selling that one for 25 cents. You want Ashley's dirt? 25 cents. It's there. But are you worried about that kind of stuff? Are you worried about, like, like changing a name or hiding identities or getting a new Twitter just to get into stuff? Yeah. I. I Well, first off, I feel like just – kind of my whole life more or less I've got very good at just being quiet because I'm honestly like I'm a registered Republican always voted that way um but you know just uh in the business of entertainment usually people are liberal so when someone's yeah. just Trump bashing I yeah I just smile I don't say anything I'm really good at being quiet uh and I have some friends who what if they I found out you voted for Trump yeah, I that could be a big thing. I'm gonna do it again. Oh, they're gonna you're gonna lose everything. They're gonna get mad at you because you no. have an opinion. Yeah, and like a brain. You're, yeah, you're using a process where you're allowed to vote and choose something, you know, like we've been using forever, but you're gonna get yelled at it for it now. Like I it, listen, I if someone votes for one or the other, that's fine. I don't care. It's not about their vote to me. It's about my vote and my thought and what I think is best. But that's what's cool about we have one vote and that's it. But I would never yell at anyone for having a different vote. Who cares? Like you're someone who's creative. People think like, oh, conservatives can't be creative. That was a thought for a long time. It's liberal Democrats are creative. It's like everyone can be creative. It's it's, it's not part. It's one small part of who you are. It's not your personality. Too many people. It's become their personality now. But you're going to be judged on that. And it, maybe it will help you. Maybe certain people are like, well, I only want people that support Trump. And you're like, well, that's weird that I got hired for that, too. You don't want to get hired for that at all. That should be nothing to do with who you are. Yeah. And then, you know, like, too, like, some people, they're going back, like, 10 years to see if anything they could take offense to, you know? Yeah. Do you have some good shit? You don't have to say what it is, but do you have some shit back there? You got you know, worry? Are you gonna be Chrissy Teigen? You gonna go digging back and fucking delete your stuff? Oh, I've already I curated. Oh, did, did curated. you have? What did you have? I mean, don't get into detail if you don't want to. But like, did you have something bad, or was it just like you're like, ah, this isn't just something I want out there now. But it's not. It wasn't bad. Like, did you did you have anything crazy? No, 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 nothing crazy. Just like you know, like say when I'm like 21 and in college, just like pictures from like drinking, but nothing. Yeah, but you know, stuff that is that's all dumb. Well, every the people that judge that are just mad they didn't get to do that when they were 21, or they did it so much they think that the deflects it's who cares? We, we all change. Like, 21 year old you is a different you than that. You have to be, you need to be 21 year old you to become the you that you are now. And it's so crazy. We want to look back and stuff. Yeah, if somebody was saying all black people should be put back on a boat and sent back somewhere, and that's on their Twitter. Yeah, take that one down. But someone's going to find you. That maybe you're not a good person. Maybe you shouldn't be worried about shipping folks. You know what I mean? That's not a good thing. But, yeah, if you had a drink or, like, you know, if you're, someone was, like, topless or doing something like that, fun or crazy or different, who cares? That shouldn't affect who you are. We shouldn't have to worry about that shit. 
Whatever happened to second chance? Whatever happened to the growing of a moving on? That, that we don't we live in a society now where if you fuck up once, they just want to fucking castrate you. It's crazy. Cancel. <laughs> I hope to get canceled. I'm my whole goal is to just keep doing shit. So if I do get canceled, I'm like, ooh, I was famous enough to get canceled. That's all I want. I want to be in that one moment where I almost make it, and they're like, cancel. I'm like, oh, good. I made it. My name got out there for one second. That's it. <laughs> but that would, I think that that's a, a thing you're going to hear about a lot now where you are, like, who you can work with, who you can't. Like, oh, this person was friends with Chris D'Elia, so they can't write on this thing now because they're in trouble. That's, that's the part. Are you worried about that? Hollywood's all about – even with COVID, the, all the comedians and all that, they're still out there trying to, like, do weird shit to ladies. That's weird. I guess it's good for you to be a white woman now because you got more power now than ever there because they, they have to give you stuff because they're like, if you don't, you could just say that Brian Kalen tried to rub his stuff on her head or something. Like, it's a weird time. You got to be worried. But you also, even as a guy, you have to be worried. Like, you say one thing and someone could just spin it. There's so much going on. How, how do you have time to create? How do you have time to do the actual thing? Because there's, so, there's all this, like, high school drama. I, how do I have the time? Not I, just you, but just in general in Hollywood. All these people trying to create, but you have to, everyone's more worried about canceling and, and harassment and, and politics and COVID and all this shit. It's like, my God, Wendy, you have to, I think you almost have to leave where you are to get be quiet create and then come back when you have to sell almost yeah yeah and i i know uh you know just other people that i follow they do that um you know you know wherever that is like i one friend he uh locks himself in a hotel room in vegas and just writes for like days straight in never vegas. sleeps and he's doing coke he's in vegas you don't go to <laughs> vegas go to utah did you see Vegas locking himself in a room with eight whores? Vegas is not where you go write something. Vegas is where you go do fucked up shit and get inspired to write something later on in Idaho. You don't go to <laughs> Vegas to fucking write in a room. That's what he tells his wife. I'm going to Vegas to write. I'll be back in eight days. My phone won't work. I'll be in Vegas <laughs> writing. And then he writes a movie. It's about gangbangs. Like, well, how'd you get inspired by this? I don't know. I was just in this room, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas to write. Do you have a writing place? Do you have a place you have to go and do your stuff? Um, no, I wish. I just, um, um, I mean, I have a beautiful home, but I don't yeah. have a. No, I don't mean that. a place to go. I mean, like, do you have somewhere where you create? Like, I, I, I have trouble writing things. When I have to write, I can't write at home because I get distracted by home. So I have to go like to a coffee shop or I have to go for a run first and think about the thing. If I'm at home, then I know there's TV. I know there's the computer. I know there's things that I'll sit there and get distracted. I have to go somewhere where I tell myself, this is work. This is where I create and I'm ready to do it now. Do you have something like that where you create or do you, can you do it anywhere? See, I'm the opposite of you. I have to do it at home because my home is quiet. Wow. I cannot at all go to a coffee house because then I'll just be eavesdropping every single conversation around me. Yeah, but that's inspiring. And you start hearing some dumb shit. You're like, ooh, I like that conversation. That could, Maybe that can weasel into here. Like, I've, I've, I've used that in my jokes for comedy all the time. I'll, I just, I just, that's how I work on crowd work. I listen to them say dumb shit, and then in my head, I retort. And come, I don't say it out loud, but I quickly make fun of them, and it, it keeps that muscle going. But I can see that. If you're trying to really – I like quiet, but I can't have comfort in my quiet. I need, I need a little tension in my quiet to make me work, because if not, I'm just going to take a nap. And I yeah, I, I do, yeah, I do all my writing at home. Not in Vegas yeah. in a room. No, no, I don't go to Vegas for a weekend and lock myself that, in a room. Is that guy married? Is what? Is that person who locks themselves in a room in Vegas, are they married with, like, a no. family? All right, because that'd be better. They just, I would love that. You tell your whole family, like, eight kids or was waiting on you, like, the wife's all alone, like, well, I have to do this for work. I'm going to Vegas now so I can write Saw 7. It's very important that we write Saw I don't know if there, I don't know if there is a 7. I try to guess there's not that many. Uh, they're past 7. What? I don't, I'm not, I'm Pretty not a sure. horror person. I can't oh, do that I stuff. Love. I like stories about real things that happen when like, documentaries, like we had chatted before about like, you know, the Manson stuff I didn't know about when I was younger. I didn't like that stuff. Now I like to learn about why people do things and more importantly, why people are attracted 
to people that did those things. Like people that are obsessed with Manson, like why? Like, why, why would you be obsessed yeah. with someone who did this kind of thing? It, I like to hear about that stuff. Um, so I can get to that, but just slasher movie, that's not for me. I get people just die and I can't watch people die. Well, the first saw is like a murder mystery. Kinda. It's not really a mystery. It, it's, it's dumb. <gasps> Oh, I love the I first. saw that one. It's the first right. one has a special place in my heart. Your heart's terrible then. Like, I always thought, like, those people that write those things, like, the Eli Roth, people like that, imagine they Oh, I love make, Eli. No, don't get me wrong. He's obviously creative. But sometimes creativity, it, when found in the right light, can be triumphed and, and put in the right spot and you become a superstar. But what if he didn't get discovered? What if he did it all and someone just found his notebook and all that was in it. He'd be in jail forever. Like, to, to, to write those kind of things sometimes, these awful things, like when people are abducted or you know, <laughs> trafficking movies and things like that, with these ideas, someone gets so into it, so much detail, like, oh, what are they planning? Like, oh, no, it's a movie. It's like, yeah, but that came from somewhere, dude. That came from somewhere. Like, that's some scary shit. Like, that mind, if found in the right way, like, the difference between me and a homeless person in the subway just screaming thoughts is that I found a stage to go to, and now people are like, it's okay for you to yell crazy shit. But the guy at the subway station is also yelling crazy shit, but he just didn't find a stage, so he's supposed to be crazy. It's weird what we can create and what's acceptable and what's not. Eli Roth has written some really fucked up shit, but we, because it's been accepted and pushed on and taken chances on, then we're like, oh, it's okay. That's just how he thinks. But that's crazy that he thinks like that. Do you think like that? Do you think about like wearing people's skin? I have never wrote any slasher movies. What do you write about? I Not so Stephen King's babies, your stuff. Well, the Stephen King story, it's um about a woman who has deja vu and um spoiler alert, um at the end she realizes she's actually dead and she's just playing that last moment like again Jacob's in her mind. Jacob's Ladder scenario? <laughs> and then, um, like, for original stuff, I... Is she, so is I she just, Jewish? Because um, I'd call no. it Deja Jew. That'd be a good movie title. Deja Jew. Like, it's French and Jewish? Like, yeah. <laughs> I know you can't laugh at that because the Jews run Hollywood still. I know. I understand. I understand. It was a good pun, though. Go ahead. So, but that, that's, that's the whole, wait, he sold you that for a dollar? A lady got deja vu. At the end, she's dead. He has give me a dollar. Well, no, they're like on his website, there's a list of, I don't know, maybe like 20, 30 different titles. And, you know, you just write to them and say, hey, is this title available? And I'm going on there. I'm buying one for a dollar. What's the website? Oh, just stephenking.com, probably. <laughs> Oh, probably. Yeah, you know, I mean, it might be dollarbaby.com. But it, it's my, Stephen King's web, whatever his official website uh, is. I'm guessing dollarbaby.com is taken by either Dollar Shave Club for babies or somebody who actually sells babies for a dollar. The black market I, does need a website. I like that I would think. one. The black market one? Yeah. yeah. Black well, market one for sure. We are talking about Eli Roth and like him you know, having a mindset of something creepy and dark that works. What if you're someone that really just knows the values of babies? Like that's a gift to some people. Like say you like look at a baby and go, Oh yeah, you can get $37 for that one. And that, or that one's a keeper. That's three digits. Like that you need to use that talent somewhere And dollarbaby.com is where you can use that. You can help people find the best deal for their baby. Oh, see, I was thinking like you appraise babies. Oh, like you put it out there and you go, this is the value of it, but you're not selling it. You're just finding out the value of your child. So when you get mad at it, you know, if there's a reason why <laughs> when it grows up and you're like, I'm just disappointed in you. Really? Yeah. Cause you were appraised for thousands of dollars. Right. You don't yell at one kid. Like what's mom. You're not even, you never scold me. We found out you were worth seven bucks. <laughs> you're, you're doing the best you can. <laughs> I'm mean, actually, you're overachieving. You almost acted like $10 there earlier. Good for you. So, <laughs> What do you so? What if you make the movie? The Stephen King go, hey, I know you paid a dollar, but now fucking, I want to be involved. Does he get involved? It's his idea. He'll know. Well, I know that. Um, do you know Frank Darabont? He's the director of Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile. He was the showrunner for the. I know those things. Yeah. What, by the way, this is going to be a question where I sound dumb, but I don't know this. In my whole life, I've what the fuck's a showrunner? What does that exactly mean? 
Oh, they're in charge of everything. They're the boss. But would they're that like be the, the big, like the. No, but what? Okay, they're the showrunner. So they're, but like, what do they do? You they're running the show. That. But why? Like the they're run- like but, all of the department heads are under them. So they're the, they're in charge. But that's a, you would think it'd be a better title than showrunner. Showrunner sounds like someone who's running around during the show. Like, here's your coffee. Like, it sounds like a dumb name. You'd think like Lord, Lord of all movies or something. That's showrunner. Whenever I hear that, I always think like I always think it's someone who was kind of not in charge. Whenever I've heard it, I didn't realize they were actually in charge of everything. But they didn't write it. They're not directing it. They're not producing it. Are they in charge of those people? Are they in charge of the producer and director? Yeah, they're in charge of those people. But they're not doing anything. They're just they're like a head football coach where they like they're kind of like just hiring people under them to do their bidding. What are they doing? The, well, like all of those other people, like a director, producer, they report to them. Yeah, but they're doing they all oversee- the work. They're producing and directing, and then showrunners like, "Good job, way to produce." <laughs> that was good producing today. Thanks. Way to go, key grip. Way to key grip it up. Like, what do they do? Do they have insight? <laughs> do they say anything? Or are they just oh, like, nodding their head? I'm sure that they do. But, you know, like you I'm don't sure even know. You said you're sure. You see, that's a fucking bullshit job. I thought that's what an executive producer was. It was somebody <laughs> who didn't really produce, but they put in money and they put their name on it so they can get credits at the end. Yeah, you know, like they're in the writing room. I'm sure. Well, what is, how, I've never worked on a television show. Yeah, but you just you kind of knew. You said you were talking about you. You brought up this guy. You said he's the showrunner for Shawshank Redemption. And then what did he do? He just he would just sit there and go. For the Walking That's Dead good, Morgan Freeman. Way to Morgan Freeman it up. You did a great job. Thanks, showrunner. I wonder if a showrunner yeah, without legs is like. I don't, that, how dare you? I'm a show sitter. I can't run. I have no legs. All right, so this guy, what was his name again? Francois what? Uh, Frank Darabont. Yeah, I um, like Francois I, better. Um, I know that at the beginning of his career, he did a Stephen King dollar baby. And in the contract, you have to send Stephen King a copy. And I, I guess Stephen King liked it so much enough that he offered him Shawshank. What Which then kind of, like you know, it? led to... Oh, imagine huh? that. Imagine that if he didn't like it, he writes you back and goes, oh. boo. He apparently does not like a lot of things from what I've read. Ooh, I'm doing it then. Oh, my God. He'll, he'll, he'll tell you that he doesn't like it? I want that letter. Well, I'm going to write something awful. I, from an interview I read, he, uh, and I, I, this isn't like an exact quote, but it's just something along the lines of he says... He has a shelf in his home of all of the movies, and he said most of them are only worth one viewing. Yeah. Some things, maybe, you know what? I don't watch a lot of movies a lot. One viewing's fine, but can you get all the way through it? I guess that's the key. Can you get all the way through the movie? But that's kind of a dick move. He sells it for a buck. He doesn't make it. He just goes, fuck you. And then he goes, eh, it's not worth my time. Fuck you, Stephen King. Help them out. Coach them. You got time. Coach people. You don't need to make any more stuff. Why can't he help these people? Then he likes the one Shawshank guy. That makes sense, I guess. <laughs> he, so he wrote Shawshank, or he was the showrunner on Shawshank? He, he directed So he, had, he was under showrunner. Now, see, that's the thing. Like, I think showrunner's just TV. Is that just TV? They don't, they, there's no movie runner? I've never heard of that position. I'm making it. I'm a movie runner. Nah. That's what I do. Movie runner, Pat Oates, yeah. That's what I do. I run movies. That sounds like a projector. A guy who runs a projector, though, like movie runner. It doesn't. It's not a cool title, showrunner. I wouldn't want a business card to showrunner. It doesn't sound cool. I feel like, like you need something like executive something something. Yeah, executive uh, Lord God of TV. That's it. Like, I'm the God of television. I like the Lord. Lord Esquire God. Esquire's fun too. But what's yeah. your what's the dream? What's the you start off, you get in, you move around. What do you want? You want to be a showrunner? Do you want to be a you want to be movies? You want to be TV? What's the dream? Even though the dream never usually happens, usually you start opening doors and new doors open, and we all understand that. But if you had to do this one dream of what you're gonna do years from now, and I'm like, oh my god, I had Ashley Marie Thornton before she wrote that movie about a midget who killed seven people and became a slave and called seven midgets a slave that she bought from Stephen King or whatever movie you write. The, the baby Jessica. Yeah, if, oh, if you do that, you owe me $2, well, by the way. $2 I want. 
And I will tell you afterwards, I go, this was terrible. And then I'll steal it and write it myself. What's the dream? Um, would love to write movies. Um, I also have, um, I got some advice from, I don't know if you know Paul Gay, but he wrote no, Liar Liar. Paul Gay? <laughs> That's his name. That's the best name. I like Paul Gay. He wrote Liar Liar with Jim Carrey. And a uh, piece of advice he gave to me was to write a book first. So what I'm doing right now is I'm writing a book. So a uh, survival job is in a bridal salon. So my book is just a collection of bridezilla stories. And I'd like to turn that into it. I'd like to be a showrunner on that TV nice. series. Was he the person with you that went to Scientology? Was he your gay best friend? Because then that would make more sense if he's Paul Gay and he's your <laughs> gay best friend. Right. And he gave you advice. You got gay advice. See, that's what this guy should be doing with his name on everything. He puts his gay spin on TV shows. Like, are you gay? Like, no, I'm Paul Gay. It's my gay spin on this show. That's perfect. He can just do all the gay jokes. It's about me. See, uh, as a comic, you want Paul Gay. That's the name you want. Okay, but that's good advice. Write write a book first, but but it's different. Sell the rights and sell the rights for a dollar. <laughs> yeah, just one dollar. One dollar. That's it. What do you do? One dollar, and that's it. And that, but but the dream is to write movies. Now, would you Sorry, write? Can a, you hear my cat? I didn't, but then I saw you turn, and then I listened hard, and then heard the cat. So I did not hear the cat, and then heard the cat once I was forced to hear the cat, which is fine. You're allowed to have cats. You hear my children in the background? They're chuckling, laughing at things. No, no one's hearing anything. We're fine. Um, would you, what if you were writing stuff and nothing was getting picked up? Okay. You're, no one's buying it. You're like, you're work, you, you're proud of this shit, but just, it's no one's, everyone's turning it down, turning it down. Would you consider writing something that you didn't feel good about, but you knew would be accepted to get your foot in the door? Would you do that? Like in the comment, like that hacky thing, like, I'll write this weird story that I know people would want right now, even though I don't feel it, but I know people accept it. Maybe like, would you like kind of sell out if you will? Um, I, I wonder if I, like you said, like I would get to that point. Cause right now I'm not there, but you haven't, you haven't yeah, failed maybe yet. like in 30 years, I don't know. 30 um, years is too long. Yeah. This would, that would come quick. You would write a couple of things. You're like, like within six weeks, you're like, Oh God, let me just write this thing. Like, I, I, I don't think I would be able to do that, but at the same time, I think I would start thinking more about what the audiences want. I would get desperate, I think, if you moved out there, or you could have to, like, I got I to gotta run away, because it, 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 you're putting yourself in. You, you, you want to get accepted, and you think your thoughts are great, but there's a million people, same thing as comedy, a million people also trying to do the same thing. How do you stand out? And the ones that stand out sometimes, you're like, that's not creative. That's some bullshit that anyone could have thought of. But then again, as creatives, we overthink what the audience wants. The audience wants some, they're, they're not creative. So the audience just likes, I like this dumb thing. It's got a sheep that talks. Like, yeah, I guess that's fine. Or like, or like you see like an Ernest goes to camp franchise. Like what, what the fuck's writing that? But that guy made tons of money. There's dumb things out there that work. Medea, I know Tyler Perry's now heralded, but that's dumb. It just, I dress like a lady, but I'm, Miss, I'm black Mrs. Doubtfire. It's, it, it, but it, it worked, but I'm sure it's not what he wanted to do at the beginning. I'm sure he wanted to create others to be like, this will get me a foot in the door. This will get me the things I need. So are you willing to sell your soul, I guess is what we're saying, for a dollar so you can make it? Because I think that's the mindset you need. You need to join. We've learned in this. You need to join Scientology. You need to get rid of your gay friends. You need to write about a well baby, and you need to sell your soul to make it. Are you willing to do that? Um, my soul. You're thinking I, about it. See? You're willing. You know, You'll do I, it. I, I, you do have to collaborate though. And at the end of the day, I think you just have to be at peace with your name being on this project. Do you have to collaborate? Can't you be a selfish asshole and just be difficult? Those are the ones who we all know about the difficult people. No one knows about a collaborator. Name me a most famous collaborator besides Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. We all know that Affleck was doing all the work. I mean, I think just with any you know, whether it's like film, TV, a play, what, whatever, I think just every single person involved in that is collaborating no. with each other. No, the guy who fucking, listen, I had an uncle, who, a great uncle who did set design, but and he'd be like, well, I, I worked on Spencer for hire. I'm like, ah, you drew a car in the background. Shut the fuck up. You didn't write it or act. That's nice. He didn't collaborate with the fucking actors. 
No, no, he doesn't get the credit. No, you have to be selfish. You have to tell everyone else that they don't exist without you and that they can't look you in the eyes. You have to be that person if you want to make it. We need to bring that person back, that evil person who just yells at people and is powerful and they're afraid to talk about you. That's who makes it now. And then you get canceled years later, but for now you make all the money and you get your own island and you fly people out to it. That's what you need to do. But you don't put kids on it. Put adults. Put old people on it. Nobody will care if they go out there and have sex with adults. That'll be fine. I don't think that's right. You shouldn't agree to that. You shouldn't have agreed to that one. Out of all the things you agreed to on this, that's the one you shouldn't have. <laughs> Where can people follow your Twitter, all that stuff? Where can they learn more about you? And you're now you're, you're, sh- you're hopefully going to start them or your failure where they can watch that. Where can they? Where, where they can find upcoming Well Baby movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so by the way, I, we're, we got to work. Someone out there, if you do it, I just want to be in it. I want to be a guy who mows the lawn in front of the well in the movie. A quick cameo. That's all I want. Well, wouldn't we have to get buy her life rights first? Yeah, but I'm sure we can get it for a dollar. If we can get Stephen King that is for a dollar, we can get well, baby. But no one's talking about baby Jessica right now at all. And I'm sure she hates being called that. It's like, I'm adult Jessica. I'm right. Jess. Like, or, or we just change the name from Jessica to like some other name. Baby, not Jessica. <laughs> but I, I, I'm sure someone, I'll guarantee someone owns the rights. When that happened, someone bought those right. I mean, I'm sure they jumped oh, yeah. on that right away. But they've been sitting on it, and they did shopped it out, and no one ever did anything good with it besides TV movies. But to put a movie out now about it and do, like, a weird spin where it's, like, based on it, but, like, it's more about the baby being in the well, but what, what could have happened if she never left the well? Don't really yeah, need the rights for that. that. <laughs> right? Do you need the it's rights for that? T- yeah. Uh, it's a- yeah. And where can they follow you? Anyway, yeah, um, so Instagram, it's my full name, Ashley Marie Thornton. Do I need to spell that? Or? No, they, when I tag you in all these things, they'll see it, but I guess and if then, you want uh, to, it's, it's not the way you think. Yeah, and then uh, Twitter, it's just underscore Ashley Marie. That's easier. That's it, yeah. That's easier for people to do that there. Ashley, thank you so much. Sorry if I ruined your career by saying things that you had to nod your head to, but I appreciate you coming on. Oh, it's fun. We'll do it again sometime. Definitely will. Thanks.